You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. Yes, sir, baby. We told y'all big things were coming, and here they are. The Up Tempo mm-hmm. podcast is officially joined with the guys over at the War Report. They are starting a new podcast network, and they felt like we deserved the shot. So we are happy to prove them right in joining the War Report network. Blake, how fired up are you, buddy? Dustin, I'm fired up. I, I just can't thank these guys enough, man. C Dub, B Will, uh, Ike, and Mike G. Uh, thank you. I know me and Dustin are just uh, excited through the roof, uh, and and there's so much work that is still to be done. Uh, we know behind the scenes what is going on, and and let me tell you something: these four guys, they're hungry, they want to work, uh, they they talk to us every day, and this is what we were really looking for with the network, right, Dustin? Yes, sir. Uh, we just wanted we, some we, help, man. We wanted some support. Yeah. Exactly. We wanted some support. Uh, we wanted some guys to interact with us, uh, and you know, hey. Coach Cadillac Williams last year, what did he say, Dustin? He said, man, sometimes you just got to love on these kids, right? <laughs> you just got to show them some love. And, and I feel like that's what these guys do. And they're such hard workers. They're always coming up with ideas and, and just things, uh, like I said, behind the scenes. And, and uh, these guys love Auburn. That's the yeah. biggest thing, right? They love Auburn just like we do, just like the guys over at the College Loop do, right? Uh, and – I, I just can't thank these guys enough. I know I said it last night on their live show, uh, just from the bottom of my heart, for real, for us to come this far. And I can remember when, like you said last night, we were doing yeah. it from our phones, Dustin. And yeah. and I remember we would, if you listen to this show, no lie, right? We would do episodes and get 20, 30 minutes in and something would go wrong. And then we would have to immediately start over, scratch all of that, after we felt like we had a really, really good episode, but now we have guys that can help us on the tech side and help us do things uh, l- like, a, like a background like this, you know, Dustin, that can really spice up our show. Uh, and and it's just Auburn family. And, and I made sure to tweet that out last night. The Auburn family is strong. And that's one thing that is so special about Auburn is, is the love on each other, man. You you uh, you lend a hand out and you work as a team and and you love on each other. So uh, that the, like I said, Coach Cadillac Williams, he, he said it last year. We love on each other and Auburn football ain't dead, Dustin. It ain't dead. We're, we're back, mm-hmm. baby. Yes, sir. Auburn football just getting started. Auburn football is the start of one hell of an era, man. Just like this podcast is at the start of one hell of an era. And like you said, those guys just work so hard, man. Ike Jones, like, I don't know if the dude sleeps, man. I don't know if Ike <laughs> sleeps, bro. Yeah, yes. I, this guy works his ass off. The same as B-Will, the, the, uh, C-Dub, Mike, everybody, man, they all play their role. Um, it's a beautiful thing to be a part of this family with those guys. Like you mentioned, Harrison Tarr, um, Dylan, and those guys over there at the College Loop, man, go check yep. them out. And uh, the cool thing about this is, is that we all have we all have our strengths. We all have our different personalities, so – there yeah. might be some content that's not for you that the other guys have. We might yeah. do something that you don't like, but that they have. So it's – and you know what the War Report has. There's, there's nothing that they don't have. Ike's mm-hmm. breaking down film. They've got player. I mean, their network speaks for itself. What they've done speaks for itself. So we're just really excited to be a part of their team and uh, grow what we want to do. And if you're one of the people that came over last night uh, and you're new to the channel, what we want to do really is just – obviously talk Auburn, prop up Auburn, support Auburn. That's always going to be our main goal here. You're always going to get an Auburn perspective. We look at it through orange and blue glasses. But what we're not going to do is we're not going to lie to you either. We're not going to sunshine pump for the sake of sunshine pumping. And um, there's a lot of that that goes on in the Auburn fan base. There's a lot of times people struggle to kind of accept reality. Um, And me and you always look at it from the standpoint of how can you address the problem if you don't – Except what it is. And a perfect yes. example is I got attacked on Twitter a couple of weeks ago for saying, hey, man, this calendar school year, Alabama worked us. Mm-hmm. And people are coming to me saying, no, they didn't. Well, yeah, I'm, they did. I'm pulling up the statistics and it looks like they did. So that's just kind of our perspective, man. And we just we look we're really excited to get this thing popping, dude. And uh, looking here at the background, brother, do we have a new sponsor, man? Can the people get some – can they get a little discount on some fly-ass home parallel gear? 
Yeah, man. Uh, the homefieldapparel.com. That is where you can find them. At the checkout, use up tempo for 15% off your first purchase. And a little bit about Home Field. Uh, they are from Indianapolis and they created this apparel. Uh, and it, it is it is fresh to death. Okay. Uh, that you just go look at some of their designs on this website. Uh, they they have one of the nicest looking throwback vintage Auburn 1997 basketball SEC championship. Got it today, days. buddy. Got oh it today. My goodness, that thing is sauce. It is heat. Uh, they also have the baby blue. Uh, mm. Auburn, the throwback 80s with the mm. orange lettering. I mean, yeah, uh, but knows. hey, Bo knows the greatest to ever do it, right? Uh, but they also have over 150 other uh, teams. If you do, you know, let's just say you want a, a little LSU natty uh, baseball hat. You know, I, I know some people uh, in my family that, you know, they kind of, you know, rock with LSU baseball a little bit. Uh, so, hey, go check. Plenty of teams, man. They got yeah. Air Force gear. You got, they got friends. You got family. You got birthdays. Yeah. You got Christmas. They, yeah. Not all you, don't. Not all your friends like Auburn. Yeah. So uh, go check it out. Uh, Homefieldapparel.com. Uh, the the at checkout the code is up tempo for fifteen percent off your mm -hmm. first purchase. And we want to thank uh, Homefield for, for sure. giving us this opportunity to share and advertise their apparel. Uh, hey. And you can even go look at them Auburn uh, joggers that they got. I mm. wanna, I kind of want to try them. I'm into the jogger look uh, in the wintertime. I'm going to hold off for a little bit, but <laughs> uh, I'm into the jogger look in, in wintertime. So uh, the stuff's fire, man. So go give them a, go give them a shot. Go look at it, uh, homefieldapparel.com. So we, we greatly appreciate them and everything they do. But, Dustin, mm. it's time to get into a little football talk, brother. How many days? How many days away are we? 65, baby. 65. 65. By the time you're watching this, 64. Mm, 64 by the time you're watching this. And I'm a couple days away from having a son. Uh, yeah, went to the doctor today and everything. Uh, uh, Levi's at seven pounds with four weeks left, man. Okay. So uh, we're pumped about that. But let's get into this Auburn football talk. Uh, Dustin, we want to start tonight on the offensive line and that side of the ball, and that's really our main top, uh, our main topic in this podcast episode is: Will Auburn improve at the line of scrimmage in 2023? And I know we want to start on the offensive side of the ball because that is really our main focus with how bad our offensive hmm. line was last year. Dustin, how do you think this offensive line will fare uh, in the 2023 season this year? Man, it's kind of – it's funny because it's kind of like the question of how will the team fare. It's really about with so many new faces, how do these guys come together? You've got mm -hmm. a new system, a new offensive line coach, obviously, a new head coach. And you've got – I mean, so of my projected starters, Jeremiah Wright is the only guy that played last year, and he didn't start the season last year. Now we come to find out he probably should have been starting the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's a discussion for another day. And I'm excited for I'm excited to see Jeremiah, bro, because that guy is a dog, man. He plays. I'll take with the with what we've had to put up with on offensive line. I'll take some penalties every now and then. Don't make yeah. it a habit. Don't make it a habit. But I would rather you be too aggressive, man. I'd rather have to turn you down than try to turn you up. So it's was it was it Mississippi State where he took boy to the bus? Yes, sir. Yeah, fifteen yard penalty. Yeah, he was fired up to be in the game, or maybe it was Ole yeah. Miss. It was a game. It was a Mississippi yeah. squad. Yeah, some one of them games. Uh, he took yeah. old boy like off the blind side. You know, he took mm -hmm. him to the bus, bro. And and I, I get fired up about that. Yeah, no, I love the way I love the way the guy plays, dude. That attitude. Yeah, got it. We got to have it. You got to have it. Um, and it's a tone setter, right? When I see that guy doing that, it kind of fires up everybody else. And yeah. damn sure fires up the guys all the his offensive line, but the rest of them, dude. So I've got. I'm going to go over my projected starters, and this isn't, you know, crazy. But I do have a, I do have a take at the end of this that I do want to. But mm -hmm. as the season starts, I'm going to go Jeremiah Wright at left guard, Dylan Wade at left tackle, Avery Jones at center, Connor Liu at right guard, and Gunnar Britton at right tackle. Mm. And I had to think about right guard. Mm. Yeah. But hear me out on Connor Liu. I just think he's good. I just think he's that good, Blake. Mm -hmm. And I think I know that Hugh likes Tate Johnson. Yep. And I want to say that I want to say that Tate will start 
at, at right guard to start the season. But I just – for one, it's the injury history. If it wasn't for his injury history, I'd probably say, okay, Tate. But, man, I just I just think that by the time you get into fall camp, Connor Lou's that dude. That's just how yeah. high I am on Connor Lou. Um, his natural position is center. He's a few, he's a center future, you know, the future at center for Auburn. But mm-hmm. you got Avery Jones coming in here, a lot of experience, started over 40 games, his last year of eligibility. If you want to know more about Avery Jones, go check out Ike's break down the uh Ike break down the film and his watch the film segment on the Warport channel. Really good informative stuff. And what I got out of it was Avery Smart. He knows where to put everybody. So like looking at this line, man, it's just it's, like I said, it's about how they come together. Gunnar Britton is a hell of a player. And to have as good as a year as he had last year, um, well, I think he had an infected tooth, and he lost like 20, 30 pounds during the season because he wasn't able to eat. He wasn't able to eat solid foods. That's and, wild. And still it put up some very high, uh, very high grades, p- played pretty decent versus us. So um, you know, it's just it's a it's a new line, it's a new coach, there's a lot of questions. I think it got more talented. Yes. I think it is more talented. So now it's just – and I don't think that's a question. Um, what about what about more athletic? Yeah, 100%. And yeah. that's one thing that, like – so with Dylan Wade, uh, Cole Kubik's very high on Dylan Wade, right? Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things about it. He just – he likes his athleticism. Um, because I remember hearing I, – and I haven't heard Cole say this specifically. I've heard him talk about his athleticism and just how, ex- how excited he is for Dylan Wade, yeah. especially in this Philip Montgomery Hugh Freeze offense. But one thing that I had heard from other places was that maybe Dylan was a little too small to play the tackle position in the SEC. But it appears like with that athleticism and with his fundamentals, they feel comfortable putting him at left tackle, protecting a guy in Peyton Thorne who is not the most mobile. And that's the thing. So it's going to be – it's a whole new offensive line. So whatever the offensive line did last year really is irrelevant. But I will say this in those guys' defense. They ran block – very well. It was pass pro yep. that was now the run blocking came and went at certain times. It seemed like in the big moments when we needed to run the ball, we weren't able to establish it. Yeah. But it was the pass pro, man. It was the pass pro. Even go back to Bo Nix, right? Running for his freaking life at LSU. Just mm-hmm. no pass protection at all, really having to make things happen. And then imagine how it would have looked without Robbie Ashford saving it. Yeah. I mean, imagine if it would have been TJ Finley back there all year. Do you remember the three plays that Holden had to play? Yeah. <laughs> he was sitting back there like a duck that well, had no and, shot. And you remember, uh, we were actually talking during that Missouri game where we were like, no shot, he can come in this game. Right. Not the way this offensive line is playing. Like, And and when he did come in, you you took a, a big-ass breath, and, and you were just like, please don't get hurt. Please don't He's get hurt. You know, yeah, because uh, – it just wasn't there, and and like you just mentioned, the run blocking come and went, right? But I felt like that didn't happen until the last four games of the year yes, uh, when Cadillac took over, mm-hmm. Will Friend uh, started calling plays, and that is really when Auburn went back to smash-mouth mm-hmm. football, uh, and, uh, and that's when things started clicking a little bit on that offensive line. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with everything you said, Dustin. I, I really do. I think this this offensive line is more athletic. Uh, I think they're going to move a little bit quicker. I think they're going to pass pro better. I think uh, run blocking is going to be pretty damn good. And you know, I still want to see it on the field. Yeah, uh, I don't want to sit here and say you know Auburn's just going to be smash mouth and and just sugarcoat everything. Uh, because that's not who I am. I want to see it on the field, but I do believe we got substantially better at the line of scrimmage on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, one thing that's important to remember is that this isn't this isn't Madden, like especially <laughs> on the offensive line. You don't yeah. just take the the highest rated guys and then match them up. It's mm-hmm. about how they play together. It's yeah. about how they mesh. They're going to have to find that right unit. I will tell you this. I feel a whole lot better with Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery making the decisions than yes. I do Brian Harson and Eric Keesaw. Mm-hmm. So that we have guys that we know are established. We know these guys can make these decisions. So I feel comfortable with it. It's just it's a big, big question mark, man. There's it's it's all brand new. And thank God it's brand new. Because the thing that was so crazy about last season was you saw the year before. 
that these guys aren't that good as a unit. So I, I don't even want to single out those guys individually, but they literally played together for at least three seasons. You had three seasons of work from those guys. It was what it was from day one. Mm-hmm. It never got better. And you had you had a staff that just said, we'll run this back. And when you bring back all those experienced guys, all those guys that were previously starters on your team, nobody in the transfer portal wants any part of that. They're going to say, no, I'm not going to come there to compete with a guy that's already started here for two seasons. Mm-hmm. It, it's just you're going to have to cut some guys. And unfortunately, they brought it back. That was the result you got. Just like, man, it, it took Cadillac. Yeah, it, it took Cadillac Williams. A guy that un, that literally, when you cut him open, he bleeds orange and blue to get us back to running smash mouth football. And I think that was more just about attitude. That was more yep. just about what he was pumping into the team. And if yep. you have a guy telling you all week, this is the way we're going to play Auburn football, eventually you'll start to buy into it. That's a yep. big difference from what they had going on the first part of that season. So as far as looking to this future, man, it's just going to be – it's just going to be all about – all about how they come together, all about finding the right unit. I feel really good, though, with a guy like Avery Jones that has so much experience being the center. And uh, when you talk about athleticism, dude, Connor Lou's got it. The, the, the thing yeah. that's going to be the question for Connor Lou is going to be, can he put on the weight necessary in time? Mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, man, I just think he's – I just think he's that guy. I think that Connor Lou will be will start on a start on our line for a minimum of three seasons. And if he if he doesn't start out the gate by the end of the season, it's gonna be one of the things where you just can't deny it. And if I'm wrong on that, guess what? People get hurt in the SEC on the offensive line. He's gonna get to start anyway. Really, 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 really excited about him. And that's the thing too. Haven't even mentioned him. Another guy, because Dylan Way came over from Tulsa or Tulsa. Philip Montgomery. Another guy that we got uh late in the portal process. Is it Jordan or Jaden? I believe it's Jordan, right? Jordan Muskrat? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, Jordan Muskrat from uh, from Tulsa as well. And a lot of guys were after him. And that's the thing, too. You can look at stars. You, people are now trying to rate these portal players, give them star rankings, all that. You can look at all these things. Look at their offer list. If Look at what schools are going after who, right? Yeah. And with Muskrat, he was wanted. People wanted mm-hmm. to get him. Um, Dylan Wade, USC wanted a hey, – USC mm-hmm. wanted they made no they made no you know bones about it. So these are big time wins in the portal that we had to have. What would have happened, Blake, if we wouldn't have got these eight, nine guys on the offensive line that we did? Can you imagine what this room would look like right now? We'd be in trouble. Uh by the way, Dustin, it's it's Jaden Muskrat. Jaden, um, okay. Yeah. Uh so I just wanted to clear that up uh, a lot of new with. faces we're still learning yeah. you guys 30 yeah, 40 well, guys man half yeah. the roster flipped on us <laughs> yeah, especially at this position group yeah. right uh, so yeah it, we would be in trouble we would be you know up the creek without a paddle right and what coach Hugh Freeze did with this group through the transfer portal I really think brought uh, excitement back to let's just say the program because we were so used to every single year. We've talked about this numerous times, Dustin, offensive line recruiting, offensive line recruiting. I mean, my buddy Gus was taken. I mean, he was taking damn defensive ends and trying to turn them into left tackles, bro. And it's so like, wild because Gus is a good football coach. Yes. I'm not saying it wasn't time for him to go and all that, but just just in a vacuum, bro, Gus Malzahn can coach football. He's not a yes. dummy. That's what's so crazy. He was not what we just had. And and that's what's so crazy to me about it. You know football, and he yes. knows the importance of running the football. It's his plan. Mm-hmm. So for him to not address it the way he did, it just blow my mind. And it's why we're in that position to where you have to kill the portal yep. where it looks. So yeah, just, it goes back. It goes back five years. I mean, bro. five, six years, you know, <laughs> like that, that was the hole that we were in. So, you know, it, to, to see this and the job that they've done uh, just through the portal uh, was phenomenal to watch, but uh, you want to go over to the defensive side of the ball, Dustin. Uh, I, yeah, I think now this is, this is where the question marks are. 
Yeah, and because let's be honest, we got some big pickups and through the transfer portal, and this was also another area that we had huge question marks. Can Auburn stop the run? And I know there was a couple key games that you wanted to bring up mm. uh, where we just absolutely got thrashed on the ground. Yeah, the, the one that me and you sat there, got to see in person, mm-hmm. uh, Penn State, they ran for 245 on a 6.3 yep. yards of carry. And let me tell you, the, the, the problem that I have with this is that I'm gonna sound I'm gonna sound like an old country boy southerner real quick, okay? You let them boys come down from Pennsylvania mm-hmm. in Jordan Hare Stadium and smash you off the ball, bro. Smash a, you off the ball. And a freshman in the backfield, too. Yes, sir. But he didn't have to do nothing. All he had to do was find the hole, and there was three That's of them for it to pick from. And by the man. second half, it just got it just it just wore down. And football, man, is to me, as much as I love basketball, football is the most beautiful game because everybody's got to do their job, man. Mm -hmm. LeBron can cover up for somebody in basketball. Kobe can cover up for somebody in basketball. Kevin Durant can cover up for somebody in basketball. If you don't do your job in football, man, and it goes for units. So if the offense isn't moving the football and controlling the clock, then the defense – is dead tired by midway through the third quarter. That's exactly what happened. And that part to me was just like, man, you let these cats come down from the Big Ten for the first time ever. Okay. And mm-hmm. shout out to the Penn State fans, bro, because y'all traveled. Y'all yeah, traveled did. and y'all were loud. And they were very cool, by the way. I had a lot of cool interactions with them. Mm-hmm. A very, very good fan base. Fan. I sat in a section. Right. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> I sat there hey. Oh, that was so miserable, man. Oh, Owen Wilson behind enemy lines. Yeah, it was rough. Dean Hatman didn't come save you, though, did he? you? <laughs> nah. nah. I, I left. I left after halftime. And, and I, I said, potato head, you can have it. You know, like, we don't want you here. You know, like, I was just so mad. My wife's an Alabama fan, and I looked at her, and I was like, we're leaving. And she was like, do what? You know, and I was like, we're leaving. I was like, I'm never coming back as long as he is on that <laughs> sideline. I will never come back. All right? Never. Yeah, it <laughs> and was – she just uh, – she had a trip about that. But uh, that was the longest ride back to Mobile, Alabama that I've ever had. You know, I mean, uh, what's so funny about that, Blake, is we woke up that morning, me and my brother, and we were in our hotel in the Phoenix City, and we were getting the truck on the way to the game. And I looked at him and I said, program hanging in a balance today. Mm-hmm. This can go one or two ways right here. And, look, it went one way. And it was yep. because of – couldn't stop you the did, run. You didn't stop the run. I mean, you didn't move the ball on offense, and the, and the game plan was absolutely yeah. trash on offense. You land a king, big play, then you take the quarterback and the receiver that made that play off the field, switch out the whole unit other than the offensive line. And I've never seen a coach switch out offensive linemen in the middle of games either. That was the first time I ever saw that. Because he's not a coach, all right? He's not a coach. No, he's <laughs> not. He is a motivational speaker. Um, <laughs> he says good stuff. But yeah. – uh, but. The point I'm making is, is that offense set that defense up for failure. Yep. And that's a part of it. You can't blame them big boys at, at a game like Penn State for being pushed around. Dustin, we also had a lack of depth, too. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. Uh, yeah. And I I mean, still, I'm still concerned about that, bro. There you go. Uh, I, I am. And then Arkansas, right? Arkansas comes to town, the final game of this nightmare, and 276 yards, and they average 5.9 a carry, like – what Rocket Sanders, Rocket Sanders did to us, bro. That they they ate us up. I, I, Dustin, though, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm so thankful that 276 yards happened. I mean, hey, hey, look, look best thing to happen to us. For sure. I, look, look. I love Auburn. I bleed orange and blue. Uh, my wife will tell you right now. I am diehard through and through. But boy, I mean, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can deal with that 276, all right, because <laughs> what happened right after that, right. I can deal with that 276. A necessary evil, you could say. <laughs> A yeah. necessary evil. But uh, my birthday was like the day before, so I was kind of like, ah, okay, well, but I didn't have high expectations coming into that, yeah. man. But it's uh the depth concerns, Blake, the depth concerns on D-line mm-hmm. right now. So when we talk about some guys that come over, Masili Kite from Maryland, 
mm-hmm. getting a lot of press. We were talking before you were saying you're seeing stuff where this guy is projected to start. Yep. And this is just honestly, like we talked about a minute ago with Muskrat, new face. Sorry, brother. Didn't watch any Maryland last year. Didn't watch it down a Maryland Terrapins football, believe that or not. So <laughs> I don't know nothing about him. Uh, there's a kid from Purdue as well. I know he's expected to get into the rotation. Yeah. Um, another prediction I'm going to make here for freshmen. By the end of the season, Keldrick Falk will be the best player on that defensive line. Woo! That's a big one there. That's a yeah. big one. Yes, wow. Boy, we might best have to player. clip that. We might have to clip that one now. Listen, Talk dude. To me. Listen, bro. It's just that it's, it's he's already up to like 285, 290. Yeah, and a, there's, a, a physical freak, right? Off the charts. Just just an absolute monster from everything. Everyone yeah. that because here's the thing, bro. We've been failing to get off the bus test, too. Yeah. When you when you slack as bad as we've been slacking in recruiting, especially in the trenches, you failed to get off the bus test. Mm-hmm. We ain't got off the bus and scared nobody. Mm-hmm. Keldrick Falk is the kind of kid to get off the bus and scare some people. That's mm-hmm. a well put together young man uh, that would beat him five star if he wasn't from Highland Home. That's all that's about, and I get that. You know, you got to judge versus competition, and we'll, we'll get into that towards the end of the episode. That's kind of what I think's happening with our boy Walker White. This. They're gonna they're gonna look at your competition and kind of judge you off that. I think mm-hmm. Highland Homes two A, three A at the max. So yeah. just they're not gonna get a lot of love. But man, you saw again the offer list. Everybody in the country would have taken Keldrick Falk in their class. We already heard about the progress he made in the spring. Now you're hearing him the possibility of him playing more at that true defensive end position with the department of Jeffrey Emba. I still think you're gonna see him on the Jack because listen, I like Jalen McLeod. I do. Mm-hmm. But I don't – after that, I'm not seeing it, man. And I'm not trying yeah. to – I'm seeing some stuff like about Elijah McLeod or uh, Elijah McAllister from Vanderbilt. I hear that he's a great kid and a very good person in the team locker, you know, a good person in the locker room and all that kind of stuff, team player. That's all great. And I hope he succeeds. But the the, the numbers and what I've seen, I'm just – I don't expect a whole lot on the field. I don't think yeah. – I'm not trying to knock the kid. I'm just saying I don't think he was brought here – he was brought here. He was a plug. He was right. a smart he's, plug. He's, he's, he's under. It's understood. Yeah. What you know, like a, like a Marcus Bragg type role. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about necessarily on the field, like position wise, about like playing time wise, but a leader. And trust yeah, me, you, trust me you, when I tell you, this locker room needs leaders, bro. Yeah, you just needed a guy to fill a void, really, and mm-hmm. and 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 a guy that n- not not just that, but a guy that can also contribute a little bit, uh, but not be you know, an absolute stud. Auburn was just hurting at that point, all right? And and they needed Elijah McAllister. Uh, and so I, I agree with you to that point. Um, I'll be honest with you. I think Justin Rogers coming over from Kentucky was a massive pickup. Uh, I, I think yeah. that is that is going to do wonders uh, in, in the trenches uh, along that line, him at the nose right there. Uh, I think he is going to uh, be a freak. And I, I think uh, what Marcus Harris, uh, that's the other one. I, I think Marcus Harris is going to have a, a phenomenal year. Um, that, one of my biggest things, Dustin, is we know how good this secondary is, in my opinion, is going to be. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not going to say can be because I think they're going to be yeah. great. All right, but Great. one thing, one thing that has to happen for them to be Auburn forever greats is this front seven's got to get to the quarterback, brother. And and I tell you that is something we have struggled with. Uh, and you know, look, losing Hall and Wooten and and those guys, yes, it hurt. But at times, bro, we still couldn't get to the quarterback. Right. You know, and, 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 you know, I, it's a lot yeah. to put on just them too and depth, you know, I mean, Why? you could, yeah. you could see them. I mean, they were gassed in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter, bro. I mean, uh, and you could even go back and watch that last drive in the, in the 21 iron bowl. I mean, there was a couple of times we should have got to Bryce Young. It wasn't called. I'm not going to bring that up, but uh, yeah, but uh, we just, you know, we couldn't get to him and uh, you know, it, last year we couldn't get to the quarterback. It killed us. Uh, and and for you to ask a DB to cover somebody for six seven yeah, seconds, it's impossible. Impossible. Yes, Look, let see. me. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something. That's the hardest position on the field. 
if you want to talk, DB, all right, buddy, you're backpedaling against dudes running four two four threes, all right, and they know where they're going and you don't. So good luck to you, all mm-hmm. right. It, it's tough, and yeah. I, I mean, in my opinion, you know, you got the quarterback position, obviously, uh, but any guy that can stand out there on that island and and do it like that at a high level, uh, a freak of nature, in my opinion. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think those guys are going to have breakout years. Um, I, I I think this front has potential to be really damn good, Dustin. I do. I think this defense has potential to be really damn good. I think if you pressure the quarterback and if Auburn can just stop the run, man, what were we like? What were we, 97th or something last year? Yeah, right there. I mean, it's, it's 172 yards a game. Yeah, with so I think, you know, point six or something like that. Yeah, we were right around a hundred or something. It, it was something like that. Um, Not but, Auburn football, exactly. Uh, so, you know, I, I think we have the potential to be great. I do. Let's put ourselves on the spot, Blake. Starting on, let's do it like this: offensive line. Mm-hmm. Do we get better this year in pass protection? Yes or no? Yes. Significantly better or marginal improvement? Marginal improvement until okay. I see otherwise. Right. Okay. Run yeah. blocking. Better, uh, worse, marginal improvement. Uh, significantly Sign- better, in my Sign- opinion. So we already averaged 205 yards a game last year. Not the best in the SEC, yes. but definitely not the worst. And you think it's going to get better? Maybe the not reason- yardage, but the but you're saying the production. Let me break it down like this. All right. The last four games, phenomenal. All right, Mm -hmm. but what happened before that? All right, I I think you're going to have a more solid structure, and you're not going to see the blunders in the scheme and everything. Mm -hmm. And and you remember Georgia last year? Oh, how good! Who was it on the fourth and what was it? Fourth and two, we line up to go for it. I want to say it was Council. Uh, I'm not 100 percent on that. Maybe was it Studs? Somebody just fifth year senior brother. A guy that had played yeah. a whole lot of football, and they whiffed. They just straight up whiffed, and and we got we got blown up. I think it was Tank that got blown up. Yeah, I think it was a cat from Germany. I'm already his name's already gone. Zaire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it, that's how bad it was. I don't think you're going to see those blunders. I think you, from what you brought over in the transfer portal, the reason I say significantly better is because I think you're you have more stability. Uh, there you have guys. If they can learn how to play with each other and mesh with each other, uh, there's gonna be there's gonna be some dudes there, uh, and and that was the biggest thing to me, man. Last year was Auburn. You get out the gates on offense, and what was it? False start. Mm. False start. And now you're starting first and fifteen. I don't think we're gonna have stuff like right. that this year. Uh, I just I think this is going to be a rock solid group, and I think. I, I think we're going to move some people this year, man. I hear you. So you're saying we're going to – the discipline is what I'm yes. getting from. You think the discipline – because yes. that's a good point you make up, man. I, I That kind of slipped my mind was just those guys were so experienced, mm-hmm. and they were the ones making the mistakes. I love me some John Samuel Shanker. I know he's not mm-hmm. he's a, you know, he's not an offensive lineman, but he did have some blocking you know requirements, and he did line up on the line sometimes. Mm-hmm. Man, John just – made some some pre-snap mistakes but yep. specifically on this offensive line man like like experienced guys just shooting us in the foot on third and one bro it is third and one and now it's third and six and the difference in that between turning around and just handing it to tank versus having to get our passing game last year to work like good lord man well, it's just night and day we played without a center too last year i mean that didn't help I, yeah. I, and and then tate gets hurt you know, I mean, we – What a debacle that was, waiting all off season when you know Nick Brahms can't play. Yep. You know he's got the surgery, and then it's – you're trying to throw it together. You're you worried what was Tate coming in at like 275. And yeah. I know it seems like I'm getting on Tate tonight. I'm not. I love Tate. Um, yeah. I, it's, but – He just wasn't ready to play. He, he wasn't, wasn't ready to you're play. You're just getting thrust into the situation. Yeah. And then he gets hurt, and it's just like, man, you know, you just kind of feel bad – I feel bad for everybody that was on that offense last year. Just nobody was put in the right position to succeed. So I'm going to say this, man. I think that we got to get better, better in pass protection. Yes. It's, 
it's impossible. I can't see how it could be much worse. And I'm yes. not going to wood saying that because I'm an Auburn fan, man. But I think you get better in pass protection. I think I, I think I'll say this. I think you get better all across the board. Yes. And I think it'll be significant improvement because one thing, yes. one thing that is 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 could yards per game can be tricky because you can run for 400 yards versus UMass, and then the next week you play Georgia or LSU or something, and then you don't do shit. And then it's like, okay, well, statistically over two games, you average whatever. What'd you do when it counted? When it counted, bro, everyone knows we have not been able to run the ball. When it's counted, we have not been able to protect the quarterback. I think that all those things get significantly better, if nothing else, for better scheme. Let's say the talent is exactly the same. I think the talent on the offensive line got significantly better as well. But let's just, but let's say it is exactly the same. Just a scheme. I just think that the people calling the plays and making the decisions are such a significant upgrade from what we've had over the past three or four seasons at that position that you're going to see something more successful. So defensive line, Blake. Rushing the passer. Does Auburn get better this year? Mm, man. Plead the fifth. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say I won't plead the fifth. I'll say no, and it's just mm. it's just yeah, until otherwise I, because yeah, I, I gotta see it on the field. Yeah, I, I I can't sit here, man. You lost those two freaks, and like you want me to sit here and say that that we got better. Uh, I just yeah. I can't say that. Yeah, it's, not, uh, not right now. Not right now. Right now, it's not. I, I, listen, I agree with one hundred percent, and that's why I say. I think Keldrick's that one is Keldrick's talent, mm-hmm. but two, I just I don't with that talent, I don't see a lot of guys on that line, especially in a pass rushing position, mm-hmm. that are better. Now, do you think Ron Roberts' scheme is going to create more pressure? It has to, it has uh, to. because I know he likes to play. He 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 likes to bring the heat. Mm-hmm. I know he likes to play. Uh, what does he call them? Uh, I think he calls them like creepers or something. Yeah, uh, creepers. Yeah, and uh, and I know he likes to bring them down, and he likes to play near the line of scrimmage. So yes, uh, I think he could create more pressure on the quarterback. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, man. The the Derek Mason, uh, that whole little experiment or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, rushing three and dropping eight was not the answer. Dude, don't get me started, bro. Uh, and then Schmetting did a somewhat of a better job. He was the best of the potato posse. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, good for him for finding a job. And, yeah, for uh, sure. Proud, proud of him. Get away from those guys. Yes, take your own path, brother. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it was still uh, like, like one of our listeners commented on the YouTube uh, last episode, and, and he said we were always playing pass first. It was like everybody we were playing was mm-hmm. air raid. You know, our linebackers were dropping before they ever read the play, and we weren't in running lanes. And I think that's going to be different under Ron Roberts. You know, uh, so yeah, I, I think he's going to create. He might create more pressure. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure the defensive line is going to create that pressure. Yeah, that's and. Maybe that's part of why Hugh hired him. Is Hugh knows yeah. he looked at the roster and said, "Man, I'm a little bit depleted here." Ron Roberts is known like the scheme is his thing. He can scheme mm-hmm. up pressure with less talented people to you know to make up for. Do you like the guys with the hands in the ground? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm all for seeing a Ron Roberts defense, bro. Like, it's gonna be fun. And it's it's the wild card, right? It's it's the it's the wild card, and it's like, okay, what will we see? And like you said, yeah. man, it's uh, listen, dude, I give all the love in the world to Kevin Steele. Those were some of the best damn defenses, yes. you know. Um, the, the the best performance the man ever had was what he did twenty nineteen at LSU mm. against Joe Burrow. I mm-hmm. mean, but boy, you go back on YouTube, pull that game up. You want to see a defensive masterclass? Yes, sir. If if we, I think the guys over at the College Loop today talked about it. If Jarrett Stidham would have come back in 2019 instead of Bo Nix having to start as a true freshman and go into that atmosphere, uh, that Auburn could have made the college football playoff. Uh, and the defensive performance that was put on that day 
was phenomenal. So, yeah, I agree with your Kevin Steele. Yeah, no, Kevin Steele was that dude, and we got so accustomed to those defenses. And then, like you say, all of a sudden you go to Mason where it's like, whoa, 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 we like pressure. What is this? Yeah. You know, and then you bring the heat all game in the Iron Bowl in 2021. And then on the final drive, you go back to what's been getting eight alive all year. And all of a sudden you go up a 90 plus yard drive and mm-hmm. you get eight alive. You got to bring the heat. So, yeah, man, excellent point about Ron Roberts because that's the wild card in all of this yep. is what can he scheme up to make up for just what me and you think is clearly a lack of, at the very least, a lack of depth. Like, yeah. tell like tell me the pass rushers. You know, it's Keldrick Falk, Jalen McLeod, I guess Elijah McAllister, right? Yeah. Like, so what are you going to do? So it's going to be about bringing linebackers. I'll be interested to see how a guy like Cam Riley, a big body linebacker, how he fits into that, mm-hmm. how he gets into this pass rush. Um, this is going to be a really fun defense to see. It's going to be something different that we haven't seen before. And you make a good point saying it's going to have to account for some of that. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm with you. I don't. To me, I just this is the biggest question mark. So I don't I'll say I think we're gonna get better. I do think and this this uh so on pass rush, I'm with you. I'm not gonna say we're gonna get better because yeah. I don't know. It's possible, but when you just lost Equiliota and Derek Call, yep, I don't see any second round picks on the run. I think Keldrick Falk is that guy, but he's gonna be a freshman. Yep. So even though I'm sitting here talking him up, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some learning, you know, there's gonna be some learning curves here. It's not he's not it's gonna be it's gonna take time. And you gotta have you got he's gotta have help too. He's gotta have Derek um Derek Brown, right? Marlon Davidson. Mm-hmm. That's a team because you gotta account for one of them. How much different did Derek Hall look once Echo Leota went down? Yep. Now all of a sudden you're double teaming Derek. And he can't eat as much. So just not having the bodies is going to be the issue here. And it's why I say improvement as far as pass rush will rest on what Ron Roberts is able to scheme up. As far as just personnel, I don't see it. Yep. Final part of this before we move on, defending the run, stopping the run. To me, Blake, this right here, this right here is probably the number one between and I know people will say quarterback, 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 and yes, I know. <clears throat> but stopping the run in this SEC mm-hmm. still matters. Setting the tone at the line of scrimmage is still the way to win football games. Can you air it out and get by? Yes, but this is a formula that has worked since football has been around. And if you don't stop the run, if teams do come in like Arkansas, that know before they come in your building. Was Arkansas what, – what do you think that Wednesday was, Blake, when Arkansas was watching that film? They knew they were coming to eat, bro. Yeah. They knew they were coming to eat. That's why That's why they're picking them to beat us again because we have to go mm-hmm. on the road, and their one question with Auburn is can they stop the run, and they don't believe Auburn is going to be able to stop K.J. Jefferson and Rocket Sanders for another year. So there you yeah. go. And that's a, that's a logical thought process. We look at Auburn – as Auburn fans, our natural instinct is to go, Arkansas – I ain't trying to hear that shit, but mm-hmm. what did you say, man? It's a good point. Um, so, but I do think we get better at stopping the run because I think that Justin Rogers is a huge addition. I don't know a lot about Kite from Maryland. Don't watch a lot of ACC ball. I've seen Rogers play at Kentucky, but I'm going to trust the people that say, Hey, this guy's going to be in the rotation. This guy's a dude. I think there's a little bit more depth at D tackle. I understand we lost Colby, love Colby. Hell, a, a very underrated player, by the way. Yep. But um, and I think that the linebackers are going to have a part of that too. Not really part yeah. of this discussion, but I'm expecting a big, big gear from Robert Woodyard. I think he's a sleeper. We'll have an episode coming up, yeah, pretty soon on sleepers and guys that we're looking out for that we think people are kind of, kind of not paying too much attention to. And I'll go ahead and you know, a little spoiler. I think he's one of those guys, man. I think Robert Woodyard is a thumper, and I think that that D line, Ron Roberts' system. Doing it, yay, baby, too. Blake's always going to shout out his mobile mobile boys. And, yeah. But a uh, big recruiting win, by the way, man. You got to flip them Bama kids. And I think Robert yep. Wood, you're just going to get in there this year. And uh, he's going to be a big, big uh, – because that's that's what everybody says about Robert is he's a thumper. He gets up in the gap. He pops a running back in the mouth. 
So I think that we've got some guys at linebacker that can complement that defensive line. Ron Roberts scheme, how's that all going to work? I do think that we get better. And I'm even going to say this, Blake. As long as the course, you're going to have injuries. But as long as it's not two, three, four guys. If it gets depleted, it's going to be rough. Yep. But if the core stays intact for the most part, I think that Auburn gets significantly better in stopping the run. Mm. I like that. Uh, I can get down with it. Um, I, I it agree. With you. Yeah, and 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 I agree with you at the linebacker spot too. Uh, I think I, I do think that getting the additions that we got out of the portal uh, is going to help. Uh, you know, and I'm with you on the Justin Rogers stuff, man. Mm. Like I, I think that dude. Uh, at the nose is going to wreak havoc. I, I think he is that dude. He was a massive pickup. I work with a diehard Kentucky fan who was absolutely crushed that he left. <laughs> uh, so, and and he told me, you know, he was like, Blake, you got a hell of a player. And so, um, I, I do think uh, is 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 Jason Jones going to have that year? You know, uh, we, we need him. Yeah, we we need him to step up and and like you said, he's got to stay on the field. And I, I think the potential's there. I do. I, and this is the one question mark to this defense. But I, I do think the potential's there. And if this happens, this defense mm. could be special. This defense could be special. Got to create turnovers, Blake. We ha- we went so many uh, games we- last year without – I mean, I, I don't know how it finished off the top of my head, but I do know at one point we were, we were down 18 in the turnover margin. Mm. It is impossible. To go five and seven with that stat alone tells you this roster is not as depleted. A lot of it's flipped, but man, there mm-hmm. is there is some talent that's still there. There are some guys there that can make things happen, bro. They've mm-hmm. got to be put in the right position. And yep. speaking of putting guys in the right position, you gotta get them. Mm. You gotta get them. And we're gonna talk about right here, man. Khalil House. Yep. Makes his official commitment tomorrow. And for the longest time, Blake, we thought this guy was an Auburn lock. There yeah. was – was it two weekends ago at this point? Yeah, Eyeball Koji Gate. Dustin, by the way, uh, if you're watching this, uh, by the time you're watching this, if it's Friday, mm-hmm. uh, it is – is it, it – yeah, excuse me. Uh, it is Friday uh, when Khalil House makes his uh, decision and he is crystal ball to Stanford, like you said. So hopefully Hugh can come in here. We've seen it just recently with Joe Phillips. We were hearing all about crystal balls, crystal balls to Georgia. And I'm going to hope that if we can flip a guy that's crystal ball to Georgia, that we can flip back a guy that we had in the boat yep. and can get him back from Stanford. I don't know how – I don't even know what happened there. You know what I mean? You were committed – because here's the thing. They shot out all these eyeball emojis. And well, let's just get into this because we haven't touched on it yet. Mm-hmm. When you send out those eyeballs, what they have meant over the last couple of years is – there's fixing to be a public announcement. Yep. So what is happening is, is people who are sick in the head, like me and Blake and like many of y'all listening, yes. that means we're going to be updating our phone constantly, constantly, constantly waiting on this. Every yep. three to five minutes. Where's it at? Where's it at? This message board, that message board, this message board, that message board, Twitter, 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 D and this guy, this guy, what's going on? Da, da, da. Nothing. Nothing. We come to find out some stories come out that it's believed Khalil House was who this was for, that he made a silent commitment in front of a bunch of people on that Saturday night. Obviously, a lot of people got overzealous. Where the problem comes in is the official Auburn football account doing it. Yeah. That's where the problem is because you send it out, and here we are, and the person that is was for still hasn't committed, and now – we're here and he's going to commit somewhere else. So it would, to me, it was just an unforced error. You didn't have to make it. You never had to shoot out those tweets and we wouldn't have known the difference, but now you created this situation. And now in the future, what are you going to do next time you see him? Next time you see, Shrug I would love you. Shrug okay. it off. That's it. I'm, I'm yeah. not really worried about it anyway. And, and like, I, I kind of told you, uh, like, I just kind of look at it now as, well, you know, is he going to commit? Uh, when he commits, is he going to decommit? Right. Uh, like recruiting is just so hard to just stay up with, dude. Like, 
it's just a roller coaster of emotions. And and that's what I felt like the bat signals were, you know, I'm looking at the bat signals and I'm like day five of the bat signals, you know, like, here we go. I don't know. Uh, it was weird. Uh, and if he goes to Stanford, I mean, that's got to raise a, that's got to raise a red flag. Right. I mean, I, I know it's still early for this next class, but, I mean, it's got to raise a flag, right, Dustin? Yes, this is this is my concern with where this stands. And I told this to you all fair. Look, it's not over. So don't yeah. get in, you know, don't I'm not yeah. I'm not saying that, oh my God, doomsday. It's not a doomsday take. Yeah. What I'm saying is this far in the game, look at other people's list. We have zero commitments on the offensive line. We have zero commitments on the defensive line. I guarantee you, if you ask anybody on our staff involved in that, in a moment of honesty and truth, they will tell you that wasn't our game plan. In mm -hmm. a vacuum, it's losing Khalil House to Stanford. You say, well, that's kind of weird. That sucks. But it's a, one of the best academic institutions in the country. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is where it becomes problematic. Khalil House, Jamison Riggs, a guy that we are after, a guy that Walker White has been all over. So there's no doubt we want him. Because Walker White is mm -hmm. getting getting told, hey, man, these people. Yeah. And he's been all over them. Just the, sat the same Saturday that we believe when the, the the eyeball gate went on, the back signal gate went on, yeah. and we thought it was Khalil House, there was some noise about maybe Jamison Riggs was fixing to commit. Mm -hmm. And now we hear that he's crystal ball to Georgia Tech. So I sit back and I say, hmm, Stanford, Georgia Tech, Casey Poe, looking like he's Oklahoma and or Alabama. Looks like it's an Alabama lean bound. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that we were all after. Jonathan Daniels, right here in my hometown of Pensacola from Palm Forest High School. Rated as the number one tackle from on three, unless they've ratings have changed or whatever. But last time I looked, he was their number one rated tackle. We had him. There was some stuff Walker White shooting off to him. I actually was in a space that Walker White, uh, somebody was hosting. I, I would give the credit if I could remember, but uh, I hopped in there and asked, asked Walker White a question about Jonathan Daniels. He was like, yeah, 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 we're after him. Um, I know his coaches. And this is a big kid. Yeah. And it just, we were at some point where the leader, and now all of a sudden our RPM projection is 10%. So mm -hmm. I just look at all these and I go, what? And here's the thing. Jake Thornton averaged over 250 yards at Ole Miss last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt he can put together a line. I don't question that. He just got a guy like Connor Lou. I just told you, I think Connor Lou is probably the most talented offensive lineman on this team. Well, mm -hmm. Not this year, but just talent on the board talent. I'm mm -hmm. that high on Connor Lou. And, and it's not a, that's not a wild take. A lot of people were, um, and a lot of people are. And, uh, but so you pulled some high school guys, you pulled some portal guys in a short amount of time when we really, really needed it. Jake Thornton did his thing and got those guys. Yeah. So it's weird. Cause it's like, I know you can recruit. I've already watched you do it in a very short period of time. We are back up against the wall here. Mm -hmm. So it's now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what is, what's the deal now with more time? Mm hmm. Why are we missing on these guys? It's interesting. I will say this in Jake Thornton's defense. This year, and this is a, this is what sucks about the past two seasons. The past two years in the state of Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi as well, but specifically in the state of Alabama, the offensive line talent was through the roof. Mm -hmm. And we weren't – it was our worst recruiting period in a long yep. time. Like we really, really missed on an opportunity. That's this class – Yes, sir. We're behind the game, man. And the way recruiting has changed. When we were coming up, I would take off a February 2nd. Yeah. Because you had a couple of kids committed. Your whole class was going to come together that day mm -hmm. from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night, dude. You were on SEC Network. Bang, 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 bang. Because that's how it was set up. Now mm -hmm. they want to commit before the season because you've got the early signing period. Guys like Keldrick Falk want to get in early. Guys like Connor Lou want to get in early. That way they can participate in spring. Yep. It's smart. It's a good strategy. But but recruiting has changed. And now when you, you think that this staff comes in, in in January and you can say late December, January, and you can say, okay, well, 
they've got time to get 2023 together. And they do, but they're even at that point, even in January, they're behind the eight ball. They're already a year behind this class. So they are fighting from behind. The state, the region is not as loaded as it usually is. There's a kid from Hawaii, Blake, that we're really hard after. Yeah. There's a kid from California that we're really hard after. Or we're at one point. Uh, there was a kid from Pennsylvania that we tried really hard to get. Look, like they're casting a wide net because it's not as deep as it normally is in the South. Yeah. But right now it's just not hitting. And Hugh Free says when he got hired, I can't depend on the portal for too long. It's a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. And that's where the concern is, is that – it's sure. not it's not coming together right now. It needs to start coming together. I just just a couple. You would at least feel mm -hmm. better with a couple. But then you say, okay, I've got no commitments on the offensive line, and I've got none on the defensive line. Yeah, that's where you really get concerned and say, well, we're we're late in this recruiting process right now. It's not over, but it's at least halftime. We're at least down twenty-one to seven. Right, time to come back. We got time to come back. But right now we can acknowledge we're behind and we don't have any commits on either side of the ball, at the line of scrimmage. I'm not claiming doomsday. I'm not yeah. raising the red flag, but I am raising a caution flag and saying, okay. Yeah. And I'm not saying that these guys can't do it. We've seen them do it, but something is going on or they've missed on whatever it is, whatever it is. I don't know, but I do know it is very concerning and it, it, it needs to change. It needs yeah. to change. Big Cat Weekend is going to be a very Crucial. big weekend at the end of this month for the staff. They have got to get some guys on the line of scrimmage committed because in this day and age, man, these kids are so impressionable, dude. Like, it's a momentum thing. We got to get some momentum going. Yeah. We keep getting commitments that pop and then nothing for two or three weeks. Yeah, I want a weekend like Florida had a couple weekends ago. At Big Cat, I yeah. want three or four guys and a, one or two from the 2025 class. Go ahead and get that thing started off. Got to keep Malik Autry in the boat. Bama's coming hard. Um, so that's really kind of where we're at, dude. It is. I'm not saying it's all bad, but I'm just saying let's put a pin in this and let's just let's yeah. just make note of it. Because right now, as we sit here at the end of June with no commitments on the line of scrimmage, it, it, are we cursed? Are we just cursed at the O line? Like, what is it, bro? I'm not giving up on it just yet. Uh, I I think there's a little time. I think Big Cat could do could do something. I I think there's gonna be uh, I think there's gonna be something moved that weekend. So, uh, I I think I think like you said, I'm not gonna I'm not raising a red flag, but uh, I think we got time. Uh, I think they'll get it right, uh, but we are behind and. Uh, like we said earlier in this episode, we're behind for numerous reasons uh, mm -hmm. that weren't this staff's fault. Yep. So, uh, Dustin, you want to move to Walker White? Yeah, man. Walker White. Talking about recruiting Walker White, dude. The guy that's putting this class together. Um, this was the big one for Hugh because, again, already behind the eight ball. Dabo had been recruiting Walker White forever. Yep. This was a guy that Dabo wanted. You know the classic thing that everybody does. Ah, we didn't want him anyway. Mm-hmm. Definitely one of them. But there was a list that came out today putting Walker White as the number ninth quarterback. And then I, I posted I, – I retweeted the list, quote tweeted it, and I said yep. Walker's going to climb up this list. And I right before we got on, somebody commented and said they just updated the list and dropped him 20 spots. So I don't know if he's in the top ten of this list anymore. But I will say this. Walker White is the top ten quarterback. And like I alluded to last night on the, the episode with the War Report guys – it's really about intangibles. And Ike says all the time, he's got a type. Who's got a type? And you can listen to Hugh and tell. The number one thing he talks about with quarterback is leadership and doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I, if you listen to any, any of these interviews Walker White's done, you know that's not a concern. This kid talks like he's 25 years old and he's got everything figured out. Um, he I does think seem big, really mature. He does, man. He does. Yeah. The, the faith part is a big aspect of it. And mm -hmm. dude, I just think that um, I think that the ranking is a lot is a lot to do with him playing in Arkansas. He plays yeah. in Arkansas. There's not a lot of high, good high school ball there. Let's call it what it is. And he didn't make the Elite Eleven. Um, I've read a couple different things on that. I've read that it was he had a CS. He missed some qualifications because of 
he had seven on seven tournaments with his team, and I've also heard that he was banged up. So okay. either way, and and, let, and let's let's say none of that is true that he didn't he just didn't qualify for the Elite Eleven. Sean White qualified for the Elite Eleven. I'm gonna trust Hugh Freeze's. I'm gonna trust Hugh Freeze's evaluation here. Sean White also qualified for a lot of other things. But <laughs> hey. I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, he had a good time. Sean White had a good time. <laughs> Man, he had an excellent time yes, at Auburn. I mean, Southern Bells will get you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yeah, the Walker White, an elite quarterback, already doing the job for Auburn on the recruiting trail, right? Uh, I, I think they dropped him 22 spots, uh, not in the quarterback rankings, just the overall rankings. Okay. Uh, so I still think he's sitting there at number nine. Uh, and then, you know, this is this is really big for me because Julian saying for Alabama is at number two in those rankings. So for Auburn and Hugh to go to also go match what Alabama's doing, you're getting a top ten guy. And what do we say in recruiting? If you're in that top ten, you're going to compete, right? right. So. Uh, I think this is huge for Auburn and Hugh. I think there's a, a lot of momentum there. Man, I mean, you just look at a guy like Walker White. Uh, he's got the size. He has the arm. He, I mean, you look at that video with Bryce Kane and just the dot, you know, Excellent. right over the defender. Uh, yeah, it, it was sexy. And uh, the intangibles seem to be there. Uh, the, the Just the ceiling for this kid. I mean, it is <laughs> – just insane, right? Yeah. Uh, he's got it, and, he, and he's got the moxie, too. You know, he's got the swagger, uh, and he's got the look, man. I mean, let's be honest. He, he's got that. You look at him, you're like, damn, that's a quarterback right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's been yeah. a minute since Auburn has had that. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, let's let's call a spade a spade. I mean, it's that's been a good. minute. It's yeah. been a minute. The, so the guy that acts like a quarterback. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, I, I think this is big time. Just being for, – for saving the look down the list – and say, dang, Hugh, Hugh's right there at number nine. He's got that Walker White fella, and here I am at number two. So, uh, Leah Mosquito in my house. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's he's at number two, and and there's Hugh at number nine. So uh, I do. I think that's a lot of momentum there. I think that's a really big uh, a really big game changer for Hugh and Walker White coming in. Uh, and to lead a program, I mean, he's already acting like a leader. So yeah, uh, that's sure. big time. But, Dustin, before we close out this episode, man, let's talk about Barstool's Brandon Walker mm-hmm. and his little rant that he had. Uh, the people have made a TikTok clip out of it. Uh, they posted it on TikTok. They posted it all over Twitter. It lit the Auburn uh, Twitter algorithm on fire, if you want to say. I mean, they were just ripping into him, man. What did you think about Brandon Walker's comments, dude? Where do you even where do you even start with this? Yeah, you um, just call him a clown. You just yeah, call him a clown, like, like, like it dude. says right there. <laughs> clown, clown. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I told Blake before the show. I said, put up something, you know, saying uh, something about Brandon Walker, but just you know, make it make it a question. And Blake just put straight up. Brandon Walker is a clown. Doesn't clown. even leave, doesn't even leave it up to question or up to debate. Just puts it out there. I giggled when I got on and saw that man. Listen, dude, it's uh people outside of Auburn talking about Auburn. Shut, just shut up, bro. Like if you're gonna open your mouth about something, know what you're opening your mouth about. What you what you are not gonna see me do on this podcast is sit there and talk about the inner workings of something that happened at Kentucky, mm-hmm. because I don't know yep. what in the world's going on at Kentucky. Yes, I'm not gonna yes. sit here and tell you about. Billy Napier at Florida. Yes. I don't know anything about that. Here's what I do know. Brandon Walker said that the first off, he said that he was talking about his whole spiel was about the fans. And then he says that the fans went, and then he says they went up to Boise and got Harson. Buddy, I had nothing to do with that. So if you're Alan Harrison, Green, Alan Green was in a hot tub, bro. So right, like, yeah, like, don't don't we, put it on us. You talking about? I'll tell you what I had to do when you said Ryan Harson. I had to Google who he was, and then convince myself this was going to work. Like <laughs> that's what that was. I was like, "Well, he's got a good record at Boise. Maybe he can coach." Uh, so, like, I didn't go up there and hire him. But the part that's that's just is wild is this continuative. They continue to push this thing about. 
Auburn fans started this rumor about Brian Harson with his affair. Yep. Listen, listen, listen. No, we didn't. Yep. Maybe, maybe a couple did, but but universally, I saw that floated around on like a message board, and I saw like a couple of burner accounts on Twitter, and then I saw every single Auburn fan come to his defense. Not in not talking anything about football. They came to his defense as a, as a man in defense of his character and said, leave that man's family alone. Me and you, Megan, no bones about it. We are not Brian Harson fans, Not never really were. Yes. Whatever, that was all BS. Whoever was behind that, BS. We've yes. I got some theories myself that it didn't have nothing to do with anybody coming from Auburn. But again, where like how much of that was even out there? The, these national people act like all of the Auburn fans were mm-hmm. pushing this Brian Harson is having an affair narrative. We weren't. The ones that didn't like him and wanted him to go were defending that part of it. So that's just a bold faced lie. That's just a lie. It was the evil boosters. Oh, right? oh it was yeah. the evil boosters that yeah, want right. to. They want to see Auburn lose uh, at 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 any given moment. They they pay millions of dollars every year, but they just want to see Auburn lose all the time. A bunch uh, of sixty year old men organized a social media campaign campaign and covertly pulled it off. So, so Dustin, you remember I always tell you, bro, that AG just wasn't the he yep. wasn't the mix for me at AU part of the reason why right uh i just didn't think he was that guy for auburn i didn't think he really i'll be honest with you i don't think he really gave a shit about auburn athletics i'll be straight up with you. Yeah. it didn't come off that way to me you if you listen to this podcast you might have a different opinion that's just how i felt now i feel like cohen's a winner I feel like Cohen wants to win. I feel like he's going to put the effort in every program out there to be a winner. That's how I feel. I I just felt like AG was like on vacation, dog. Like it yeah. was just kind of like, well, you know, if we win, we win. You know, I like, let me go get in the hot tub with my boy Brian and and chill. And he's my homeboy and everything. And you know, that's my partner. And and we gonna ride. That's my ride or die. You know. And Auburn fans were like, no. Nah. No, nah, this ain't it, you know. <laughs> like, but I'll tell you one thing, Brandon Walker. First off, uh, Barstool's trash, homie. All right, <laughs> Barstool's trash. Like you're getting you're getting carried by pizza reviews from the Ooh. guy that started the company. All right, and then you yeah. sold out the pen. Let's throw that out there. You sold out the pen, and you're trash. I mean, I, I Barstool is mid below mid, whatever you want to call it. I don't listen to it. I don't like it. Uh, you're, I just don't think Brandon Walker is good at what he does. He's a Mississippi State fan, all right? So uh, lower your tone, all right? Well, yeah, but so if you're – but you're still in the SEC. So, like, don't act like you know – like you don't know this dude didn't recruit. You yeah. know he didn't recruit. If exactly. you are a Mississippi State fan – see, I, didn't, I don't even – I don't follow him. I don't know. This is yeah. like the first thing I've seen. But – if you're a Mississippi State guy, then you know. Yeah. Why are you saying this stuff? You know what it was. Anybody bro, that followed it knows what it was. It blew a 28 to 3 lead against your team, bro. You like saw what, it. you saw it. It wasn't, it didn't have nothing to do with no affair or whatever, or anything like that, bro. That wasn't the reason why Brian Harson got let go. It wasn't because of the fans. It's because he sucked. Okay, let's be let's get straight to the point. He sucked at his job. He sucked at recruiting. He sucked at coaching. Apparently, he sucked at talking to the players because we've had a couple come out and say, hey, dog, like uh, he's from the north. I'm from the south. He don't he don't know how to talk to me. You know, like like the the, it was disrespect. And we've heard it from from beat the guys on the beat. Like like, dog, he was just flat out disrespectful. You know, and and he was rude and arrogant. You know, like like don't get it twisted that Auburn fans did this and Auburn fans did that, and and then you go back and you, you go against all your morals and you hire Hugh Freeze. Like man, oh, get yeah, out of here, bro. That, that, yeah, that part, bro. Let me tell you something. It what, what what it was eight years ago. Eight years ago, dog. Let me tell you something. Give up on the hookers and all of that stuff. Let it go. All right, it's over with. It's done. It's dead. The, he. 
do you know what can change in eight years, Dustin? A lot. I have. A, a I, lot. I have. I've, if you knew me eight years ago, bro, you would not. You would not Same. mess with me. You would not mess with me. Look, what I was doing eight years ago, man, I can't be doing it today. All right. All right? Like I'm telling you, like the dude, he can change, man, and and let it go, let all that stuff go, but. Don't sit here and tell me that Auburn fans are trash because they did this with Brian Harson and then went back on their morals and everything that they said they stood for and hired Hugh Freeze, man. Get that BS garbage. You do it for clicks. Your company's trash. Nobody listens to you, uh, and and you're just a wannabe TikToker. Mm. Hey, hey. Let, me, let me say this, Dustin. You're a wannabe college football uh, analyst, if, if we want to get real, uh, because, uh, you know, you sit and you sit at Barstool and you make your little TikTok videos with Jack Mack or whatever his name is and uh, the other girl that's on there. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, I didn't like the clip. I think yeah. the dude's a clown. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, like you said, though. So that's the thing is, 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 if you believe that, if you believe that, then I don't even know. Because, like, the, the point that you said about, about Hugh. That's where it's like that. That last part of the clip is yep. what really got me. Saying that Auburn fans, you go back on all your morals and and a guy that did the very thing that you're accusing this guy of doing. I never accused Brian Harson of that. And has Brandon Walker never made a mistake? And and what's funny about this whole thing to me is why don't nobody talk about Sark that way? And yeah. I'm not and I'm not trying to throw Sark under the bus yeah. because again. And a lot of my previous mistakes are very relatable to Sarkeesians. So I'm yeah. damn sure not throwing shade at him. I came out of that situation. It appears Sark has bettered himself and came out of those kind of problems and situations. Yeah. That's those problems and situations are something that Good point. millions of Americans struggle with. Good point. Okay. But why doesn't anybody come after him? Why would he like and I don't want them to? Yeah. He's free. Good he point. cleared. Those mistakes are in the past, but why is it so focused on Hugh? Brandon said the nastiest, dirtiest coach in college football. Yeah. Okay. Josh Pate said one time in defense of Hugh Freeze, he said, before you go talking about the guy that Auburn just hired, you might not know everything you want to know about your coach. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, it's funny to watch this because the guy that we almost hired, that that no one ever says nothing about, he's not exactly a squeaky clean personality behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of those guys that aren't. And I never saw Urban Meyer get attacked the way Hugh Freeze has gotten attacked. And I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. You know what it is, Blake? He's an outspoken Christian. He's an outspoken Christian. He wears his faith on his sleeve. And he says, I believe in Jesus. And when you do that, mm. when you were an outspoken Christian and then mm. you make a mistake, everybody wants to point their finger at you and say, yeah. we knew you were fake. Yeah, We knew that this isn't who you really were. This is the real Hugh Freeze. Yeah, That's what it's really rooted in. It's really rooted in people that don't like to hear what he has to say because they don't agree with the way he views life and or they think that he's fake. But here's the whole point of that without getting too religious. If you don't know anything about Hugh Freeze's religion, it's all based around forgiveness. Yeah. So Hugh Freeze doesn't have to sit here and continue to live his life in a mindset of a mistake he made eight years ago. Yeah. He's moved on. The Auburn football program just sold more season tickets than Mm, it ever has. So while you continue to talk about something that happened eight years ago, and while a handful of Auburn man, Auburn people got on their computers back in December and January, and and I sent John Cohen an email. (laughs) Boy, you did it. You did something because guess what? More season tickets than ever. Yep. So Cool, man. You really achieved whatever it was you thinking you were going to achieve. 
So to all these man, just just know what you're talking about, bro. If you're gonna put out a trash, if you're gonna put out such a trash take like that, yep. Back it up. If we are as bad as you say that we are, then man, I must not have seen. I must that what I saw versus Texas A&M that night must not have happened. Mm. That must not have happened. When it, oh oh, but he said we're trash people. We're trash mm. people. Oh, okay. Well, whenever those tornadoes hit Tuscaloosa, mm. I forgot the I forgot the part where Auburn and Gene Chizik and everybody from the town and the football team loaded up to go help. I mm-hmm. forgot that part. Trash people though. Brandon Walker, shut up, bro. Shut yeah. up. If you if you don't know what you're talking about, yes. If you don't know what you're talking about, keep it out your mouth. And to our new listeners, I promise you, one thing we're always gonna do here is defend Auburn. I don't yes. I don't want to talk about Brian Harson no more, other than when you have to bring him up in comparison to like last year versus this year. For a couple of seasons, it'll be unavoidable. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're gonna to have to bring his name up sometimes because he was previously the coach. There are things that are going on now that still affect the team decisions he made. But this right here, we could have avoided all of this. Mm-hmm. But when you but when you attack the morality of people when you when you say that like the family and you and you try to you try to come at it like it's fake man i can tell you firsthand from things i've experienced this week the auburn family is a real thing yeah. i've experienced it my entire life okay is everybody perfect no dude but what but but you're just out here saying stuff to say stuff it's not it's not based in any fact and i don't know one auburn fan not one that didn't defend Brian Harson's ethics and morals when that whole situation was going on. I said he's a bad football coach. He's not recruiting well, but anybody that's claiming that is a trash person. We all stuck up for him on that. And these national people that are claiming anything different are just doing the typical clickbait, jump on all. This is the, this has always been a thing, Blake. They crazy old Auburn. And what we're going to do here on Uptempo is we're always going to come at anybody that comes in here with that bullshit, bro. That's a fact. That is a fact. I agree 100%, Dustin. And look, we're going to wrap this thing up tonight. Uh, it was a hell of an episode. Uh, went a little longer than we no- normally do, but hey, we had a lot to talk about. It was a blast. Uh, and first if you, one? Yeah, first one on the on the uh, new network and uh, the War Rapport Network. Let's throw that out there. It feels good just rolling off the tongue. <laughs> uh, but we uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. We appreciate you for uh, going over to the YouTube channel, subscribing. Uh, We thank each and every one of you for just hanging with us through the journey. If you've been here since the beginning, uh, it means so much to us. But like always, we leave you with a war damn eagle and we will catch y'all on the next one. We're out.